the word Shekinah does not appear in the Bible, but the concept clearly does. The Jewish rabbis coined this extra-biblical expression, a form of a Hebrew word that literally means, he caused to dwell, signifying that it was a divine visitation of the presence or dwelling of the Lord God on this earth. The Shekinah was first evident when the Israelites set out from Sukkoth in their escape from Egypt. There the Lord appeared in a cloudy pillar in the day and a fiery pillar by night. After leaving Sukkoth they camped at Etham on the edge of the desert. By day the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to guide them on their way and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Exodus chapter 13 verses 20 to 22. God spoke to Moses out of the pillar of cloud in Exodus chapter 33, assuring him that his presence would be with the Israelites, version 9. Verse 11 says God spoke to Moses, face to face, out of the cloud, but when Moses asked to see God's glory, God told him, you cannot see my face, for no man shall see me, and live, version 20. So, apparently, the visible manifestation of God's glory was somewhat muted. When Moses asked to see God's glory, God hid Moses in the cleft of a rock, covered him with his hand, and passed by. Then he removed his hand, and Moses saw only his back. This would seem to indicate that God's glory is too awesome and powerful to be seen completely by man. The visible manifestation of God's presence was seen not only by the Israelites but also by the Egyptians. During the last watch of the night the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He made the wheels of their chariots come off so that they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt, Exodus chapter 14 verses 24 to 25. Just the presence of God's Shekinah glory was enough to convince his enemies that he was not someone to be resisted. In the New Testament, Jesus Christ is the dwelling place of God's glory. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 tells us that, in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, causing Jesus to exclaim to Philip, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, John chapter 14 verse 9. In Christ, we see the visible manifestation of God himself in the second person of the Trinity. Although his glory was also veiled, Jesus is nonetheless the presence of God on earth. Just as the divine presence dwelled in a relatively plain tent called the tabernacle, before the temple in Jerusalem was built, so did the presence dwell in the relatively plain man who was Jesus. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 2. But when we get to heaven, we will see both the Son and the Father in all their glory, and the Shekinah will no longer be veiled, 1 John chapter 3 verse 2. However, the word, Shekinah, itself does not appear in the Bible. The word, Shekinah, or, Shekinah glory, is only found outside of the Bible in rabbinic, Jewish scholars, manuscripts. What is the, Shekinah glory? The word, Shekinah, was adopted by Christians as a way of describing God's presence with his people. The phrase, Shekinah glory, is a symbol referring to that divine presence. God promised to, dwell among, his people, and there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim which are on the ark of the testimony, Exodus chapter 25 verse 22. Where does the word Shekinah come from? The word is related to the Hebrew language word, shaken, which means to dwell, or, to reside, with the added emphasis of being a permanent resident in a community. In the Bible, this display of God's dwelling among human beings is described as his glory. What the Bible says about God's glory, the Shekinah, this was a principal way in which the Lord communicated with his people in Old Testament times. 1. Showed divine protection and leadership. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. The fire and the cloud symbolize divine leadership and protection. Exodus chapter 13 verse 21. 2. Cloud of God's direction. Numbers chapter 9 verses 15 to 23, describes how the cloud, that represented the presence of God controlled the activities of the Israelite community and assured them on a daily basis that God was with them. 3. Symbolized God's presence. This same cloud signified God's presence when the tabernacle was constructed in the desert. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle, Exodus chapter 40 verse 34. 4. Located above the ark. Leviticus chapter 16 verse 2 says, I will appear in the cloud above the mercy seat. The glory of the Lord, the Shekinah, also appeared above the ark of the covenant in the most holy place in the sanctuary, and later in Solomon's temple. 
when the ark was captured by enemy forces in the time of Samuel, 1 Sam 4.21, the event was called, Ichabod, meaning, no glory. 5. The Shekinah in the temple. During the time when the Jewish people were taken captive by the Babylonians, the prophet Ezekiel recorded that originally, the house was filled with the cloud, and the court was full of the brightness of the Lord's glory, but, then the glory of the Lord departed from the threshold of the temple. Ezekiel chapter 10 verses 4, 18. The New Testament mentions the same glory of the Lord a number of times. Matthew chapter 17 describes what is called the transfiguration of Jesus. This means he was suddenly covered in glory, the same Shekinah recorded in the Old Testament. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. A bright cloud overshadowed them. Acts chapter 1 verse 9. Christ ascended to heaven in the glory cloud. Hebrews chapter 1. The writer to the Hebrews, who were mostly former Jews but now Christians, uses the same terminology and applies it to Jesus, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. In Revelation, this same Shekinah, the glory of God, again appears, this time connected with the final judgment and the second coming of Jesus. 1. Revelation chapter 15 verse 8. The temple, in heaven, was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no one was able to enter the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were completed. 2. Revelation chapter 14 verses 14 to 16. Jesus will return the second time in the same cloud of glory. 3. Revelation chapter 21. In the New Jerusalem it is the glory of God, that is the power source for all light, and those who are saved shall walk in its light. What does this Shekinah glory have to do with me? In a spiritual sense, God's goal is to reside, to be a permanent resident, with his people. Psalms 132, 13 to 16. He can reside in your heart, mind, and lifestyle if you want him to. This glory of God is always available. All we have to do is ask for it and be willing to let his Shekinah glory be the controlling element of your life. How is Shekinah glory portrayed in the Bible? The divine presence of God on earth is depicted through the following. As a cloud, Exodus chapter 24 verses 16 to 18, Exodus chapter 33 verse 9, 1 Kings chapter 8 verses 10 to 13. As a pillar of smoke and fire, Exodus chapter 13 verses 21 to 22. As fire and a burning bush, Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5, Exodus chapter 3 verse 2. Why does God not appear as a human in the Old Testament? When Moses pitched his tent outside of the Israelite camp in the wilderness to convene with God, the latter spoke to Moses face to face through a cloud as though speaking to a friend, Exodus chapter 33 verse 11. However, when Moses asked to see God's face, he denied Moses' request, stating, You cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live, Exodus chapter 33 verse 20. The glory of God was too great for human eyes to gaze upon and survive. Instead, God allowed Moses to stand in a cleft in a rock and see God's back after he had passed by, Exodus chapter 33 verses 21 to 23.